The previous video in this series ended with a qualitative explanation of buoyancy force and why certain objects sink and others float. In this video, I'd like to take it one step further and put some numbers to the, this concept of buoyancy force. So to do this, I'd like to consider this rubber ball we've been looking at in previous videos and remember that buoyancy force is a push exerted on an object when it is immersed in liquid. And the more of an object that is immersed in the liquid, the greater the force. So from this, I'd like to ask a question, which is, how do we estimate the maximum buoyancy force that can be exerted on an object? So when is buoyancy force greatest? Answer to this question comes from this idea that the more of the object that is put in the water, the greater the force. So what stems from that is the, is the fact that buoyancy force is greatest when the object is fully submerged. Once it's completely underwater, you have maximum buoyancy force, and buoyancy force does not increase. So this points to what is important when determining buoyancy force, and it is volume. Specifically, buoyancy force depends upon how much water an object displaces when fully submerged. So in this case, this ball has a volume of about 145 mils. That means when it's completely underwater, it displaces 145 milliliters of water. But it's not the volume of the water we're interested in. We're interested in another feature of the water, and that is specifically its weight. So to, ca to compare the weight of an object with the buoyancy force, we need to know the mass of the object to calculate weight, but we need to know the volume of the object to calculate the volume of water displaced, and it is the weight of that water that determines the buoyancy force. So if we have volume and we want to get to weight, we need some more conversion factors. And the new concept introduced here is the idea of density. And density is simply the how tightly packed material is in an object. The more tightly packed it is, the more dense. And density has the units of mass per volume, or grams per milliliter. And conveniently, the density of water is defined as one. So water has a density of one gram per milliliter. And we need this to go from volume to weight. And we do this in two steps. First, using the density of water, we take the volume and convert it to mass. And once we know the mass, we can figure out the weight as we've done in previous videos. So the first step, 145 milliliters of water has a mass of a one, 145 grams, which is the 145 mils times the conversion factor one gram per milliliter. Since we want to get to weight, and weight is, is kilograms meters per second squared or newtons, we need to convert this grams to kilograms, and that's another conversion factor. So we find that the 145 grams of water equals 0 0.145 kilograms of water. And once we have the mass in kilograms, we go to the second step and we find weight by multiplying by acceleration due to gravity. And the final answer in this case is this 145 milliliters of water has a weight of 1.4 newtons. So that is the buoyancy force the maximum buoyancy force water can exert on that, a ball with the volume of 145 mils. So now let's look at how we figure out whether or not an object will float or sink using these numbers. In a previous video, we calculated, we determined that from the mass of the ball, which was 115 grams, that it has a weight of 1.13 newtons. In the previous slide, we calculated it has a volume of 145 mils, which means when submerged in water, water exerts a buoyancy force of 1.4 newtons on the ball. So in this case, since the weight of 1.3 newtons is less than the buoyancy force, the rubber will float. We can do the same thing with the lead weight that we looked at in a previous video. In a previous video, we found out that the lead had a mass of 1.3 81 kilograms, giving it a weight of 17.7 newtons. If we measure its volume, we find that it has a volume of 160 milliliters. 
as we did in the previous slide with the rubber ball, we can use this volume to calculate the buoyancy force. If it has a volume of 160 mils, that means it displaces 160 mils of water when fully immersed. That 160 mils of water has a density of 1, therefore a mass of 160 grams, or 0 0.16 kilograms. And 0 0.16 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared acceleration due to gravity equals 1.6 newtons. So the buoyancy force acting on this lead when fully submerged in water is 1.6 newtons. Now, as we did with the rubber ball, we can compare the buoyancy, the buoyancy force with the weight of the lead. The weight in this case is much greater than the buoyancy force, which means the lead will sink. Now, the other question that was addressed in this video series is, why certain why objects that are immersed in water even if they sink appear to weigh less when underwater and in the previous video we learned that the apparent weight of an object submerged in water is its weight minus the buoyancy force and since we now know the weight of the lead and the buoyancy force based on its volume we can estimate how much this lead will appear to weigh if it was weighed underwater and it is simply the 17.7 newtons of weight minus the 1.6 newtons of buoyancy force to give an apparent weight of 16.1 newtons. So that's a demonstration of how to calculate, how to quantify buoyancy force and estimates of whether an object will float or sink. But I want to look at it one other way before I wrap this up and to make a more direct link between buoyancy and density. Because water is not the only object that has density. Both the rubber ball and the lead weight have a density. And since we know both the mass and the volume of both objects, we can calculate their density. So the rubber ball has a mass of 115 grams, a volume of 145 mils. If we divide 115 by 145, we get 0 0.79. So the rubber ball has a density of 0 0.79 grams per milliliter. Notice this density is less than 1, which is the density of water. So without doing all the calculations we did in the previous page, we can see that since the rubber ball has a density less than that of water, it should float. The lead weight, on the other hand, has a mass of 1,814 grams, a volume of 160 milliliters, which gives it a density of 11.3 grams per milliliter. Since 11.3 is much greater than 1, the lead sinks because it is more dense than water. Which gives up, brings up this observation, which is objects with density that are less than the density of water, which is 1 gram per mil, float. Objects with densities greater than 1 gram per milliliter sink when placed in water.